and welcome back to the Mission Control Houston and the International Space Station Flight Control Room where the Space Station Flight Control Team has been following along with the preparations for the Soyuz MS-07's deorbit burn coming up at 6.47, just uh, 32 minutes from now. And it's landing at 7.40 a.m. Central Time in Kazakhstan. On board the Soyuz, Expedition 55 crew members Scott Tingle of NASA, Norishiga Kanai of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, and Anton Shkaplerov of Roscosmos are, uh, have already closed the hatches between the vehicle and 
their vehicle at the International Space Station at uh, 1.02 a.m. Central Time and then undocked from the space station at 6.14 a.m. That officially wrapped up Expedition 55 after 166 days on board the space station. Remaining behind, the newly minted F Expedition 56 crew members, Commander Drew Foistel and Flight Engineers Ricky Arnold and Oleg Artemiev, are wrapping up their day and enjoying their first night as a three-person crew. Here in the International Space Station Flight Control Room, Flight Director Scott Stover is leading the team through the morning's activities with uh, Capcom Andreas Mogensen, who is an ESA astronaut, helping at his side. And then on the other side of the world, the flight control team in Moscow is led tonight by Svetlana Mironova. And going a little farther, in Kazakhstan, a number of officials and vehicles are standing by in preparation for this morning's landing. Eight MI-8 helicopters are on their way from Karaganda, Kazakhstan, to the primary landing site, which is just southeast of Jeskazgan. Those, uh, those helicopters hold the television equipment that will provide us views of the landing and also the inflatable medical tent that the crew members will be taken to immediately after touching down. Two more helicopters will be ready about 250 miles away in the area where touchdown would take place if a ballistic injury occurred with the, uh, cap uh, the capsule coming in at a steeper uh, entry than usual. And then a final two helicopters will loiter midway between those two sites. Also aboard the helicopters headed to the primary landing site are several NASA representatives, including Deputy Space Station Program Manager Dan Hartman, Astronaut Chell Lindgren, Flight Surgeon Rainer Effenhauser, and uh, NASA Landing Team Coordinator Chad Rowe, as well as NASA Spokesperson Gary Jordan and NASA Photographer Bill Ingalls. Six all-terrain vehicles have also been deployed for landing, and three airplanes that serve as flying command centers. Those airplanes will provide direct communication with the crew and relay those communications back to Moscow. Weather for this morning's touchdown is forecast to be clear and cool with temperatures in the 60s and winds at 23 miles per hour. So we're hoping to get you some great views of the crew's return to Earth uh, now one hour and 21 minutes away. As you follow along with this morning's activities, we'd love to hear from you. If you have questions, please send them in via social media using the hashtag AskNASA. We'll try to answer a few of those over the course of the morning, so be sure and get those in. Despite the early morning hour, it's already been a busy day in space and here on the ground. The International Space Station crew actually started their day around 5 p.m. Central on Saturday, a change from their usual wake up of 1 a.m. Central. And after making the final preparations for departure, the six crew members said a final round of goodbyes and closed hatches between their vehicles at 1.02 a.m. Central. Some video of uh, that activity is playing here with uh, Oleg Artemiev, one of the crew members left behind as part of Expedition 56, closing the hatch on the space station side of the, of the, uh, of the hatchway. On the other side, of course, is Scott Tingle, Norishika Kanai and Anton Shkaplerov. That again took place at 1.02 a.m. Central Time. And then once the hatches were closed, there were a series of leak checks on both sides before the Soyuz MS-07 undocked from the ROSFET module. That was at 6.14 a.m. Here's uh, some recorded video of that undocking, which again took place at 4.16 a.m. Central Time when the space station and Soyuz were about 253 miles above Mongolia. Shortly after that undocking, the uh, Soyuz performed two short engine burns, one uh, lasting 8 seconds and one lasting 15 seconds. 
to move the Soyuz away from the International Space Station. It's aiming at a spot about 12 miles away for the deorbit burn, which is now uh, 26 minutes away and counting. This undocking marked the end of 166 days spent at the International Space Station for the three astronauts on board. And with the additional two days it took them to arrive at the space station following their launch on December 17th, when they touched down in Kazakhstan in uh, one hour and 18 minutes, they'll have spent a total of 168 days in space and traveled 71.2 million miles on 200, or 2,000 rather, 688 orbits around the Earth. And it's been a busy, busy 168 days for the crew. And they again are made up of Scott Tingle, Norashika Kanai, and Anton Shkaplarov. Over the course of it, they saw the arrival of four other vehicles. One SpaceX Dragon cargo vehicle, one, Ru one Russian Progress resupply ship, one orbital ATK Cygnus cargo vehicle, and one Soyuz, which in March delivered the crewmates they'll be leaving behind. It's Drew Foistel, Ricky Arnold, and Olar Oleg Artemiev. They also packed up and waved goodbye to two SpaceX Dragons, one Progress, and the Soyuz that took home Mark Van de Hei, Joe Acaba, and Alexander Masurkin, who were at the space station when Tingle, Kanai, and Shkaplarov arrived. All three of the astronauts landing today were also able to participate in spacewalks during their time at the space station. Tingle's in January uh, lasted seven hours and 24 minutes. Shkapularov's on uh, February 2nd lasted 8 hours and 13 minutes. That's a Russian duration record. And because it was his second spacewalk, he now has spent a total of 14 hours and 28 minutes outside the space station spacewalking. And Kanai's spacewalk was on February 16th. It lasted 5 hours and 57 minutes. For Tingle and Kanai, this was their first space flight, so they'll each return home with that 168 days as their total time spent in space. And it was Shkaplarov's third mission, so he'll now have a, to now have a total of uh, 532 days in space, putting him at 17 on the all-time list for most days spent in space, tied with Mikhail Turin.
about 19 minutes away now from today's deorbit burn coming up at 6.47 a.m. Central Time, and everything's going according to plan in preparation for that burn. Uh, it will be performed when the Soyuz is about 12 miles away from the space station. It'll start 24 seconds after 6.47 and finish 4 minutes and 40 seconds later at uh, 4 seconds after 6.52 a.m. Central. The engines will fire against the direction that the Soyuz is traveling again, basically acting as a brake on the Soyuz and slowing it down to drop it out of orbit. Then about 20 minutes after the deorbit burn is complete, when the Soyuz is at an altitude of 86 miles above the Earth, the vehicle's computers will command the three modules of the Soyuz to separate. The orbital module on top, which is where the crew has a small amount of room to move around during the two-day flight to the space station, and the instrumentation and propulsion module on the bottom, which houses the oxygen storage tanks, the attitude thrusters, avionics and communications and control equipment. Uh, both of those will separate from the descent module, which is in the middle. That's where the crew resides. It uh, holds personally contoured seats for the crew members' use during launch and entry, as well as landing. And it also has all the controls and displays necessary for critical flight activities. In addition, it has the life support provisions and uh, batteries for re-entry and landing, and parachutes and soft landing rocket engines that slow the vehicle down just before touchdown. That's actually the only part of the Soyuz that's going to return to Earth. The orbital module and the instrumentation and propulsion module both burn up in the Earth's atmosphere, while the descent module continues on with Tingle, Kanai, and Shkapilarov inside. Three minutes after the deorbit burn at 7.17 7, a.m. Central, when the Soyuz is about 62 miles above the Earth, the Soyuz will begin feeling the Earth's atmosphere again. The descent module's computers will orient the capsule with its blade of heat shield pointing forward to protect it from uh, the heat of the Earth's atmosphere as it begins to fly through it, and then the crew will begin to feel gravity for the first time in 168 days. You can see where that happens here on this chart, uh, just above the atmosphere line. I mentioned that the heat shield is ablative, and that means that as it begins to travel through the atmosphere and feel the heat of, of reentry, the material of the heat shield basically burns away rather than transferring the heat back into the capsule. The worst of the heat will last from 7.18 to 7.23 a.m. Central during which temperature around the spacecraft will be so great that the air surrounding it will turn into plasma. 723 is also when the crew inside the Soyuz will experience the maximum gravity load. After that, it's a wait of just two minutes before the Soyuz parachutes are commanded to open. About 15 minutes before landing, when they're still 35,000 feet up, or about 6.6 .6 miles, the Soyuz computers will command the first of a series of parachutes to deploy. Two pilot parachutes will come first, uh, one 6.7 square feet and one 48.4 square feet. Together, they'll drag out the drogue chute, a 172 square foot parachute that slows the Soyuz down from about 492 miles per hour to about 178 miles per hour. The drogue chute also creates a gentle spin for the Soyuz as it dangles underneath, helping to stabilize the capsule in its final minutes before touchdown. And just before touchdown, that drogue chute will be jettisoned to make way for the deployment of the 5,575 square foot main parachute. That will continue to slow the capsule down to a speed of about 22 miles per hour. And at first, the capsule will hang beneath it at a 30 degree angle to the horizon to help with aerodynamic stability. But after one of the two harnesses connecting the parachute to the capsule is severed, the Soyuz will right itself so that the vertical position uh, is achieved for touchdown. When the capsule is just 16,000 feet, or about three miles above the Earth, the capsule's heat shield will be jettisoned, and any residual propellant will dissipate. Without the heat shield, the Soyuz's altimeter an instrument that measures altitude by bouncing signals off to the ground and uh, back to the Soyuz will be exposed to the surface of the Earth, and then it can be used to provide the capsule's computer with updated information on altitude and rate of descent. 
At this point, the vehicle's computer will also arm the module's seat shock absorbers. And when the Soyuz drops to an altitude of about 39 feet, the cockpit displays will tell the Soyuz commander, that's Anton Shkaplerov, to prepare to fire the soft landing en engines. Those are six solid propellant engines, and they'll actually fire about three feet above the ground just seconds before touchdown, slowing the Soyuz down even further for its touchdown at 7.40 a.m. Central Time. We've still got more than 12 minutes before the deorbit burn, so we're going to take a few questions that we've been getting in on social media. Again, you can send your question in using the hashtag AskNASA, and we'll try to get as many as possible in before the end of the show. First up from uh, Moog1976, uh, Asking, have the Astros been up all night and have the rest of the crew gone back to bed now that the hatches are closed? Um, so the astronauts actually took about a six hour nap before all the activities really got going today. Um, and we say they took a six hour nap. They had time on their schedule for a six hour nap. And of course, they're adults, so whether or not they actually took it was up to them. But they uh, got a wake up call at 5 p.m. Central Time, which is quite a bit different than their usual 1 a.m. Central Time wake up call. Um, now that the three members of the Expedition 55 crew have departed, the 56 crew members left behind are getting ready for their sleep period to begin, and then they'll have some off-duty time tomorrow as well. And, of course, the, the crew um, on board the Soyuz will have to wait until they get back to Earth and actually go through a few medical tests before they get a chance to, to lay down and grab some sleep. Also uh, from Anand on Twitter, we have uh, the question, how much heat is the spacecraft going to face? Um, how much heat a spacecraft faces coming back through uh, the Earth's atmosphere depends on how far away it is. So the farther away from Earth you go, the faster you come in, and that makes more heat because you uh, go through the Earth's atmosphere faster. From the International Space Station, a spacecraft can expect to fit to feel about 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and so you, you want to be sure you have a good heat shield. If you're coming back from the moon or Mars, that of course increases, so you need to have an even hardier heat shield. And just for uh, comparison, if you've uh, been watching the news and, and seeing about uh, the volcano eruption in Hawaii, uh, the lava from a volcano is about 22,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, from Scarlett on Twitter, she wants to know how the capsule handles the heat when entering the Earth's atmosphere. And uh, the way that the Soyuz handles the heat is with an ablative heat shield. An ablative heat shield um, actually burns away as it goes through the heat so that the, so that the heat is dissipated rather than transferring it back into the capsule. And really the astronauts inside the capsule shouldn't, heal, shouldn't feel too much heat at all. And Aruda on uh, Twitter, or actually, yes, Twitter asked, uh, or actually I believe this one was from Facebook, um, what speed does the satellite move and can the speed be increased or decreased? Uh, once, when it's um, attached to the International Space Station, the Soyuz is going, and the space station, of course, are going about 17,500 miles per hour. And that stays pretty steady um, for the most part. Uh, however, once the Soyuz uh, de uh, 
undocks from the space station. Um, it moves away from the space station specifically so that it can start slowing down and dropping back into the Earth's atmosphere. So it will go from 17,000 miles per hour to zero miles per hour in the course of about three and a half hours as it uh, performs its deorbit burn and returns to Earth. And Alexander Nowak on Twitter asking how many people can travel in the capsule. The Soyuz is specifically built for three people, and it is a fairly tight uh, fit. There's, there's not a lot of room to try and smuggle anybody else up to space in it. And you can see here kind of how the, how the capsule is set up. Um, you've got three seats. The commander, in this case Anton Skaplerov, will be sitting in the middle with uh, Scott Tingle on his left and uh, Norishiga Kanai on his right. And uh, this is just the middle, the middle um, part of the Soyuz. There's, there's also a, an, another part that gives them a little bit more room to move around on, on the way to the space station. But this is the only thing that comes back from the space station with them. Uh, Electra on Twitter asked, does the body feel major changes when we're out of Earth's gravity and coming back into it? And yes, uh, once the uh, once the astronauts get to the space station and have to learn to live in zero gravity, they do experience a lot of changes that we pay a lot of attention to because we want to know exactly how the body reacts to living in zero gravity so that as we explore further out into the space uh, into the solar system, we have a good idea of what to expect. Uh, and then when they come back to gravity, they also have to get used to that. They're, once their body is adjusted, they then have to readjust. And a lot of people um, have a little bit of basically gravity sickness when they come back, a lot like motion sickness you might have um, from various activities on Earth, and, and they have to have an adjustment period. And that's also something we're interested in because, uh, say, if you have gone on a, on a nine-month mission to Mars, we want to know how you will be reacting to gravity on the Martian surface once you experience after landing.
Just under three minutes left until uh, the Soyuz TMS, excuse me, MS-07 uh, begins its deorbit burn. That starts at 6.47 and will last four minutes and 40 seconds to wrap up at 6.52. That again will drop the Soyuz back into the Earth's atmosphere and prepare it to, or put it on course for a landing in Kazakhstan at 7.40 a.m. Central Time. The burn scheduled to start in 30 seconds now. Again, it'll last a full 4 minutes and 40 seconds and wrap up at 6.52 a.m. Central Time. And the team here on the ground reporting that the deorbit burn has officially started. Engines will be firing into the direction that the Soyuz has been traveling so that it will slow down and then drop back into the Earth's atmosphere. Copy. 
We have been operating for two minutes. Uh, we have gained 55 meters. Attitude is nominal. Copy. Two minutes and 15 seconds into the deorbit burn. Everything's going well so far, according to the crew on board. Copy. Two, mi two minutes, 30 seconds. We have accelerated by 69 meters. Copy. Two minutes, 45 seconds, and the burn is uh, 76 meters. Attitude is nominal. Copy. We have been operating for uh, three minutes, um, and the um, burn 83 decimal three. Attitude is nominal. Three minutes, 15 seconds. Burn uh, is 90 minutes, 90 meters, and attitude is nominal. Copy. Three minutes, 30 seconds, burn 98 meters, attitude is nominal. Copy. One minute left to go in the duty orbit burn. Everything's still looking good. We have been operating for three minutes, 45 seconds. Attitude is nominal. Copy. Four minutes, uh, 111 meters, uh, burn, copy. Four minutes, 20 seconds. 123 meters. MCC Moscow, we have a SCADA deactivation. 128.1 meter burn. We have the thermal sensors activated. Copy. All indications that the deorbit burn went off just exactly as planned. Four minutes and 40 seconds, wrapping up at uh, 6.52 a.m. Central Time and setting the Soyuz on course for landing at 7.40 in Kazakhstan. The next milestone uh, will be for the, or will be coming up at 7.14 when uh, the... Preparing for separation. Copy. When the descent module will uh, separate from the other two modules of the Soyuz, that's the only part that will come back to Earth, and it, of course, is the section that carries uh, three astronauts inside, Scott Tingle, Norishika Kanai, and Anton Shkaplerov.
10 minutes away now from the uh, separation of the descent module from the orbital module and uh, the instrumentation and propulsion module. The orbital module is on top and the instrumentation and propulsion module are on bottom. The orbital module houses a little bit of room to move around during uh, the trip to the space station after launch and then the instrumentation and propulsion module houses the oxygen storage tanks, attitude thrusters, avionics, and uh, communications and control equipment. Both those come apart from the descent module at uh, 7.14 a.m. Central Time today. While the descent module with the crew inside goes on to land on Earth. Besides the crew, it contains personally contoured seats for them to sit in during launch, entry, and landing, as well as all the controls and displays necessary for critical flight activities. You can see a graphic here of how that separation works, and of course the uh, descent module also has the heat shield that protects the crew as they are coming back through the Earth's atmosphere, as well as the parachutes that then slow it down for a relatively gentle landing. There are a series of parachutes, starting with uh, two pilot chutes that uh, pull out a uh, drogue chute that uh, slows the spacecraft down and then uh, makes way for the main parachute. And of course, there are also six soft landing engines as well that further slow it down. Mission control. The crew members are feeling well. A room copy. Uh, separation minus six. Um, we need to be in the readiness mode. You will need to close your helmet, pressurized helmet. Prepare the automatic system and uh, have the Rus hand controller in your hands. Flight control team on the ground in Moscow. They're going over the uh, items that the crew needs to check off their list in, in preparation for the uh, separation of the descent module. Again, that's coming up a little less than 10 minutes now at 7.14 a.m. Central Time. Got a time for a couple of more uh, Ask NASA questions, and you can keep those coming using the hashtag Ask NASA. This one from Lee on Twitter asking if a ballistic entry occurs, what would be the expected effects of the passengers of the Soyuz? Um, ballistic entry is what happens when the capsule comes in more shallow than it's supposed to. We don't expect that to happen today, but we are always prepared just in case it does. And uh, generally the effects would be that uh, that the passengers would be would be okay. They might be a little bit more, um, might have a little bit of a harsher landing than usual, but we've had several astronauts come through ballistic entries and uh, and come out the other end just fine. And this one from Ollie Oliver uh, asking, will we hear a sonic boom everywhere? He's in Hawaii and wondering if he will hear it there. Uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry, you will not hear a sonic boom in Hawaii. Sonic booms, um, you're generally heard when the, uh, when the spacecraft breaks the sound barrier. 
and, uh, and generally only right under where they do so. So since the Soyuz is, is landing and coming in over Kazakhstan, uh, you would not be able to expect to hear a, a sonic boom in Hawaii or really anywhere else other than Kazakhstan. Once we get to the point of the Soyuz descent module separation at 7.14 a.m. Central Time, things will start happening pretty fast. Um, just a couple minutes after that, the Soyuz will begin to experience the Earth's atmosphere. Things will be heating up, on, especially on the heat shield, of course, and the crew will start to feel the first effects of gravity. Um, after that, they will be beginning at uh, 7.18 a.m. Central Time to enter the point where the air around the capsule gets so hot that it turns into plasma. That starts at 7.18 and lasts until about 7.23 a.m. Central Time, which is also when they'll feel the maximum amount of gravity. They'll feel about four or five times the gravity that we feel here on Earth at that point. Um, that lasts again until about 7.23 a.m. and then at 7.25 we start seeing the parachutes unfurl and so things will, uh, well the Soyuz in particular will slow, will begin to slow down and, uh, and, and be making its way down to its touchdown which is scheduled for 7.40 a.m. Central Time. Astray, 11 minutes to separation.
As the uh, Soyuz makes its way back toward Earth, the uh, teams who will be meeting them at their landing site are also making their way uh, to the deserts of Kazakhstan. We've got uh, eight M18 helicopters on their way to the landing site, the primary landing site, which is southeast of Jeskaz Gan, along with, uh, uh, in, in them, uh, there's the television equipment that will provide the views of the landing and the inflatable medical tent that the crew members will be taken to immediately afterward. Two other helicopters will be ready about 250 miles away in the area where touchdown would take place if a ballistic entry occurred. And a final two would loiter uh, midway between the two sites. Also aboard the helicopter, head into the primary site, there are several NASA representatives, including the Deputy Space Station Program Manager Dan Hartman, Astronaut Shell Lindgren, Flight Surgeon Rainer Effenhauser, and NASA Landing Team Coordinator Chad Rowe, as well as NASA Spokesperson Gary Jordan and NASA Photographer Bill Ingalls. Besides those helicopters, there are six all-terrain vehicles that have also been deployed for the landing and three airplanes that serve as flying command centers. The airplanes provide direct communications with the crew and relay those communications back to Moscow. Australia MCC Moscow. Australia MCC Moscow. Australia MCC Moscow. Five minutes left now until the descent module will be deconnecting, disconnecting from the uh, other two modules of the Soyuz. And again, we'll be continuing on to Earth with Scott Tingle, Norishiga Kanai, and Anton Skaplerov inside. As train, this is MCC Moscow. How do you read us? Ice train, less than four minutes remaining until separation.
40. Attitude is nominal. The crew members are feeling fine. Yes, we're reading you astray. How do you read us? I read you loud and clear. We also read you loud and clear. A reminder, after the separation, uh, perform calm without uh, leaving the uh, push to talk button depressed. So he's Commander Anton Shkaplerov there, confirming the crew is still doing well, everything heading towards the uh, descent module separation coming up in just about two minutes now. Once again, after that, it'll just be a few minutes before the uh, Soyuz begins experiencing the Earth's atmosphere. And uh, at 7.25, uh, about 33,000 feet above the Earth, the uh, Soyuz computers will begin commanding the parachutes to deploy. Yes. 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 One. We have L9 illuminated. Copy. Altitude is 53 kilometers. Twenty five seconds to separation. Copy. MCC Moscow, Astray. Team here on the ground reporting that the modules separated as planned. That was 714. We're reading you with interferences. 10-14-262. Copy. With that separation, Tingle, Kanai, and Skaplarov are inside the descent module, which has uh, separated from the orbital module and the instrumentation and propulsion module. Descent module will keep on path to uh, its landing in Kazakhstan, while the orbital module and instrumentation and propulsion module will burn up in the Earth's atmosphere. Astray, in one minute and a half, uh, you will be performing re entry. Astray, one minute to re entry. 15.24, it's possible we won't be able to talk to you at that time.
71 штатная схема установлена. Okay. Everything is fine. Astray one. The covers are open. The flaps are open. That one open. Copy. So you see MSO7 with uh, Scott Tingle, Norshiga Kanai, and Anton Shkaparov inside. It's now begun to enter the period of atmospheric re-entry. That's when the crew will begin to feel the first effects of gravity after their 168 days in space. And also when the uh, Soyuz heat shield will have to uh, come into play as it begins to interact with the with Earth's uh, atmosphere. For that reason, the descent module's computers orient the capsule so that the heat shield is pointing forward, protecting it from the heat generated. And over the next few minutes, that heat will build up uh, and begin uh, heating the air s around the capsule so much that it forms a plasma. Expecting re-entry. And during that time, we may uh, hear uh, less from the crew as, uh, as the plasma builds up around the capsule and, and interferes with communication. That period should end around 7.23 when the, uh, they come out of the atmospheric reentry portion and uh, pa pass through the maximum gravity load that they'll experience on their way down.
Just a minute or so left before the Soyuz uh, makes it through the highest of the heating of uh, their re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. And then uh, in about three minutes, at 7.25, the Soyuz computers will command the first of its parachutes to deploy. All indications that everything is continuing to go well as the crew on board the Soyuz, Scott Tingle, Nora Shika Kanai, and Anton Shkaparov, head towards their 7.40 a.m. Central Time touchdown in Kazakhstan. Uh, 15 integrals, 7, 9, um, 2 is the pressure in the descent module. Fifteen twenty-four twenty-three. Expecting copy all. Tell we have regained communication with the crew, and I believe I even heard Scott Tingle in there saying that he was a good ride through the plasma. Now we're coming up in just a minute or so on the point where the Soyuz computers will deploy the first of its parachutes. Fourteen minutes now until the scheduled touchdown and the parachutes will have begun to deploy. It's about 33,000 feet above the Earth and traveling just under 500 miles per hour. Soyuz computers actually command the first of the parachutes deploy and that's two pilot chutes, one that's 6.7 square feet and one that's 48.4 square feet. Those pull out the 172 square foot drogue chute. The drug chute then slows the Soyuz down to about 178 miles per hour and begins stabilizing the capsule.
And as you can see, we're getting a good view now of the Soyuz making its way home, still going fast under a drogue shoot that will be making way for the uh, 5,575 uh, square foot main parachute. It slows down the Soyuz to about 22 miles per hour and uh, holds it uh, with a couple of harnesses at a 30 degree angle to the horizon until the bottom harness is removed and the Soyuz swings into a vertical position for touchdown. The crew members are feeling well. Inside the uh, Soyuz capsule that you can see under that parachute, we have uh, returning astronauts Scott Tingle, Norishika Kanai, and Anton Straplerov making their way home after 168 days in space. Copy. Everything continuing to go well as they head toward a uh, 640, uh, 740 a.m. Central Time touchdown in Kazakhstan. Yes. The one on the right. Welcome to those who are just joining us on Facebook Live. We're about 10 minutes away now from the landing of astronauts Scott Tingle, Norishika Kanai, and Anton Shkaplerov in their Soyuz MS-07 vehicle, which you can see here under its parachute, uh, returning to Earth after 168 days in space. Everything's been going well on their return from the International Space Station, which began with a hatch closer, closure at uh, 12.55 a.m. Central Time this morning, followed by an undocking from the space station at 4.16 a.m., and uh, then a deorbit burn at 6.47. It's making its way down for a touchdown at 7.40 a.m. Central Time in the Kazakhstan deserts uh, southeast of Jeskazgan. Copy all. We will verify it. Thank 
Preparing for landing. About seven minutes away from landing in, Ka in Kazakhstan for Scott Tingle, Norishika Kanai, and Anton Shkaparov. They are uh, in the Soyuz under that uh, 5,575 square foot main parachute, to making their way towards uh, 7.40 a.m. Central Time landing when they are about 39 feet above uh, the Earth. Uh, the commander of the Soyuz, Anton Skraplerov, will get a notice from the computers to prepare to fire six solid propellant engines called the soft landing engines that will slow, down, slow the Soyuz down to about five feet per second or 3.5 miles per hour. Weather forecast looks to have lived up to its promise, which was clear skies, although the day is uh, supposed to be breezy with uh, winds up to 23 miles per hour and uh, a fairly cool day as well with uh, temperatures in the 60s. Less than five minutes to go before uh, the capsule is scheduled to touch down at 7.40 a.m. It's going to be landing uh, southeast of Jeskazgan, Kazakhstan. And a uh, contingent of Roscosmos and NASA personnel are on their, on their way to meet it and uh, be ready to get the three crew members inside the capsule out uh, as quickly as possible after touchdown. How would you read us?
should be a little bit over a minute away from the planned touchdown at 740 of this Soyuz T, uh, MS-07. Carrying Scott Tingle, Norshika Kanai, and Anton Shkaplerov back to Earth after 168 days in space. And as you saw there, the Soyuz MS-07 officially landed. Looked like that was at uh, 7.39 a.m. Central Time, although we'll be sure and get an official time for you. That will be Central Time or uh, 6.39 p.m. Kazakhstan time. That brings to an end a 168 day in space for these three members of the Expedition 55 crew, NASA's Scott Tingle and the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency's Norishiga Kanai as well as Roscosmos's Anton Shkaparov. This was the first flight for both Tingle and Kanai, so they now total 168 days spent in space, while Shkaparov has now been to space three times and spent a total of 532 days there, tying him with Roscosmos's Mikhail Turin for 17th on the all-time list of days spent in space. With the crew now on the ground, you can already see that the, the support team is beginning to arrive and make their way to the landing site. That includes eight MI-8 helicopters, including the ones that provided us those great views coming down um, before touchdown and uh, also carrying an inflatable medical tent that the crew will use after they've gotten out of the capsule. There are also a number of NASA representatives on board the helicopters, including Deputy Space Station Program Manager Dan Hartman, Astronaut Chell Lindgren, Flight Surgeon Rainier Effenhauser, NASA Landing Team Coordinator Chad Rowe, and the NASA Spokesperson Gary Jordan, as well as NASA Photographer Bill Ingalls. Also deployed for landing were six all-terrain vehicles and three airplanes that served as flying command centers. They gave us direct communication with the crew and relayed that communication back to Moscow. As the helicopters arrive, that portable medical tent will be set up near the capsule where the crew will be able to change out of their launch and entry suits. The Russian technicians will open the Soyuz's hatch and help the crew members out, but uh, since they've been living in zero gravity for the past 168 days, they'll be feeling the effects of being back on the Earth's surface. On the Earth's surface and uh, so we'll be seated in some special reclining chairs near the capsule for some uh, quick medical tests and phone calls. And then as soon as possible after landing the crew will be helped into helicopters for flight back to Karaganda, Kazakhstan where local officials will welcome them at the airport. And then Tingle and Kanai will return to Houston while Shkaparov goes back to Moscow. Touchdown today came at uh, 7.39 a.m. Central Time or 6.39 p.m. Kazakhstan Time. And as you see already the helicopters beginning to land and uh, people begin making their way to the capsules so that they can get the crew members on board out and uh, back onto firm ground for the first time in 168 days.
Once again, the crew uh, inside the Soyuz MS-07 vehicle. Touchdown at 7.39 a.m. Central Time. Just even a, a almost right on time, a little ahead of schedule even. Um, following great uh, smooth transition from deorbit all the way down to landing with everything going well. And uh, now the crews um, at the scene will begin to arrive at the... Um, arrive at the landing site and get ready to help the crew members out of their capsule. While we wait to get video back from the landing site, we have a few more social media questions we'll take uh, from folks who submitted them using the hashtag AskNASA. Uh, Nani on Twitter asks, is there a rest period before the crew members are allowed to return home once they've landed? And uh, not really. They, um, they will be taken out of the uh, Soyuz capsule and moved into the reclining seats that I mentioned a moment ago so that they don't have to stand while they're going uh, through kind of the... the the initial moments of, of their return to, to Earth, and then they'll be moved to a, a medical tent where they'll actually get out of their launch and entry suits and into something more comfortable, and they'll get straight into the helicopters and uh, head back to the airport at Karaganda before they get on uh, on planes to return to their, their respective homes. For uh, for Scott Tingle and Norishika Knai, that will be uh, a long flight back to Houston, and for uh, Anton Skaplerov, that will be a flight back to Moscow. Once they do uh, return home, they'll have more medical tests, and then they will get a little bit of downtime uh, before they re return to even more medical tests and uh, start doing some technical debriefings. From Wrinkle Apore on, on Twitter, uh, we have the question, who will greet the Soyuz crew at the landing spot? And I've mentioned those names a few times. Um, there, there's a pretty good crew that will be there uh, for, with representatives from Roscosmos and NASA. A few of the uh, folks there for, for NASA include the Deputy Space Station Program Manager, Dan Hartman. Uh, astronaut Chell Lindgren, who's been to the space station and, and done a few of these landings, will be there on hand to help uh, the astronauts um, with any any anything they might need as they're as they're getting ready to board the helicopters and then make the trip home. Uh, also, flight surgeon Reiner Effenhauser will be there on hand to help with their medical needs, and uh, NASA landing team coordinator Chad Rowe is overseeing the operations. Also, we'll uh, hopefully hear a little bit later from NASA spokesperson Gary Jordan, who is on the scene and uh, traveled out on the helicopters, and uh, of course NASA photographer. Photographer Bill Ingalls is there getting photos. And here are those reclining chairs uh, already set up, waiting for the crew. You can uh, see this live view from the uh, landing site at Kazakhstan, where, as you can see, there's quite a few people there gathered to to help with the with the operations. The first uh, crew member taken out is usually the center seat, uh, the 
commander, in this case Anton Shkaplerov, lost that live view for the moment, but are hoping to get it back uh, momentarily. Uh, again, uh, didn't look like any of the crew members had been taken out just yet, but I'm sure that is going to be happening momentarily.
Back now with that live video from the landing site where the crew touched down at uh, 7.39 a.m. Central Time. Commander of the Soyuz capsule, Anton Shkaparov there, the first one out uh, as he was in the center seat. And the teams behind uh, behind him will be working on getting uh, Scott Tangle and Norshiga Kanai out as well. From the left side, yes. Good afternoon. It's the answer to one of the uh, questions that we have received on Twitter from Sean Economist asking what the first food they will eat when they come back is. That's uh, generally left up to the crew member's preference, and it looks like for Shkaparov that might have been a bowl of grapes. Fresh fruit and vegetables are always uh, in high demand after the crews get back from the space station where they don't have access to fresh food and have to uh, generally eat mostly uh, dehydrated or prepackaged food. Huh? Mentioned earlier that uh, my colleague, uh, NASA spokesperson Gary Jordan, is at the landing site, and he's going to be joining us now via satellite phones. Gary, can you hear me okay? Loud and clear, Brandy. It is a wonderful day here. Uh, as you can see from the video feed, there are no clouds in the sky. The sun, the sun is shining, and uh, we got our crew members safe here on the ground. Castle landed perfectly upright. Uh, now we're actually waiting for Scott Tingle to come out. Anton Shkavarov, you can see, is already seated uh, and taken out of the capsule safely. The experts are now uh, above the capsule. You see they set up the, the platform that allows some of the, some of the experts in uh, getting the crew out of the capsule out. Right next to them is a slide. That slide allows them to easily carry them down uh, and over to the chair uh, where they'll be seated and greeted by the many people you can see here surrounding the landing site today. Um, also inside Norishige Kanai, uh, all three crew here on the ground today. Uh, everything's looking good on our end here, Brandy. Thanks so much for the report, Gary. Look, who, looks like we're about to see somebody else come out. Yeah, looks like we're, uh, you can see Scott Tingle, uh, coming out now, doing a couple of fist bump smiles on his face. Very happy to see, uh, See his fellow crewmates and his uh, colleagues here uh, welcoming him almost immediately. Uh, I actually was able to see the landing itself. It was perfectly clear, sun was shining, uh, and as soon as it landed, I saw a small explosion at the bottom of the uh, of the castle to soften and dampen the landing. Uh, and again, that castle landed uh, upright, uh, nice and perfectly. So. Scott is, uh, you can see, happy to get out and uh, breathe his first uh, fresh air here on Earth in 168 days uh, since he's been on orbit. Now you can see he's going down the slide, still smiling, getting ready for uh, uh, to be seated uh, over here next to his uh, fellow crewmate Anton Shkavarov. Last person will be Nora Shige tonight. Uh, but Brandy, everything is looking fantastic here. The weather is, uh, is balmy, um, very, very temperate. Got sun is shining and uh, looks we're happy to have our crewmates home. Like this. That's great, and you can tell that uh, the crew is very happy to be home. It sounds like the the crowd is happy to see them as well. Uh, welcome home. That's absolutely, Brandy, and uh, you can see um, the crew. Uh, Scott Tingle is now being seated 
uh, right next to Anton Shkaparov, the commander of the Soyuz, uh, shaking some hands of the uh, of the experts who have just uh, taken him over to his seat for the very first time. And I know this uh, is the first time. Right next to him, shaking hands, and uh, uh, <laughs> as well as the interpreter. Um, it won't be long after uh, all three of the crewmates are seated here. Uh, they'll. Uh, we'll have some media here, take some photos, and right behind the media uh, is an orange tent. They'll do some field tests here uh, on the ground. Uh, this is uh, part of the human research program study that allows us to understand uh, sort of how, what happens to the crew members after they come home uh, safe and sound from Earth. This is, again, this is only 168 days, but we're looking forward to uh, trips further out to the solar system, to Mars and beyond. Well, it looks like this uh, has been a, a very smooth afternoon for for you guys on the support crew and uh, the guys inside the capsule as well. Um, I know this was your first trip out. Is it is it living up to your expectations? <laughs> uh, beyond my expectations, uh, Brandy, I will say this is truly an international effort. Uh, it was days of planning and, and lots of folks coming from all over uh, Kazakhstan, Russia, uh, Japan, and of course the U.S all coming to support this landing today. Truly an international effort, and everything came together uh, perfectly. You know, we, we sat down and planned for today, uh, giving the time that we were going to land, and lo and behold, here we were uh, within eye shot of the capsule itself, minutes later down on the ground ready to extract the crew. Truly an international effort and, uh, and a great representation of international cooperation here. Uh, honestly, very much exceeds my expectations. Very happy to be here. Well, that's great, Gary. Thanks so much for taking the time to call in, and we will let you go while we while we stand by for uh, the first view of Kanai coming out of the capsule. Thank you, Brandy. Uh, very happy to call in and uh, back to you over in Michigan Trail. Thanks. Y'all have a smooth trip home. Thank you. That again was a NASA spokesperson, Gary Jordan, reporting from live on the scene of the landing site. The capsule again touched down at 7.39 a.m. Central Time, and uh, already Anton Shkaparov and uh, Scott Tingle are out and uh, enjoying some fresh air for the first time in 168 days. The team here on top of the capsule still working to get the final crew member out. That's Norishiga Kanai, who is uh, with the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. Okay, let's move on. Are you ready there on the ground? Yes. Are you ready? Japanese astronaut Norishiga Kanai now making his way down to the ground with the help of uh, some of the support folks here. That's all three of the uh, crew members out of the Soyuz. They again spent 168 days in space, 166 at the International Space Station. And they traveled over the course of that stay 71.2 million miles over 2,688 orbits of the Earth. They've come a long way since their launch in, uh, on December 17th Let's start the measurement. from Baikonur, Kazakhstan, and now a touchdown back in Kazakhstan, going through a few tests before they make their way back home to uh, Houston and uh, Moscow. Go ahead on two. And they had a successful ride, and I uh, wanted to thank everybody at Mission Control for uh, providing the information, the uplinks, and the updates to the uh, departure and uh, 
the orbit burns and arrivals. So uh, thanks for that uh, assistance and the support, and uh, we look forward to continuing the excellent work here on ISS. Completely agree. Uh, it was a really beautiful landing. The weather looks fantastic, and the crew's happy. And, uh, well, we thank you for all your hard work on Expedition 55 so far, and look forward to continuing with 56. Uh, to support, and uh, so far so good. We look forward to another uh, four months on orbit, and uh, soon we'll be uh, taking that same ride back to the planet. Yeah, enjoy your rest day. A few words there from the Expedition 56 crew members left behind on the International Space Station, talking with the CAPCOM here in Mission Control Center, uh, Andreas Mogensen, who is a, an ESA astronaut. All the crew members again are now out of their Soyuz and uh, looking good, going through a few medical tests, making some calls to friends and family not at the landing site before they will be whisked away to the medical tent that was uh, brought out to to the landing site for their use. They'll be getting out of their launch and entry suits and then uh, making their way to the helicopters that will take them back first to Karagonda where they'll board airplanes uh, to Houston for a uh, Tingle and Kanai, and to Moscow for Shkaplerov. I don't know. We're going to move closer here. Um, Sergey, then we're going to move closer here. Uh, could you tell us how the landing was proceeding, how you're feeling? Well, first of all, feeling well. We're feeling a bit tired at the same time. We're proud to have accomplished it, and we uh, are glad to be back on Earth. We're glad that uh, the weather is beautiful, it's sunny. So the landing was quote-unquote soft. Considering there is a slight wind on the ground, you know, we want you to say thank you to all the uh, services uh, who were supporting our nominal lending. Um, noticed. Uh, an off nominal um, case right away, and they set up calm with us. あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
Members also answering a few questions from media. Looks like they're uh, all still doing good, feeling well, and uh, should be moving into the medical tent before too long to get out of those lunch and entry suits that they wore from the International Space Station, change into flight suits they can wear for the long ride home. Are you ready? Ready. Watch your step. Crews being carried away to the medical tent. There was a uh, Norshiga Kanai, and now here is Anton Shkaplarov. Astronauts are carried to uh, give them a little bit of uh, extra support since they have just taken a, a fairly wild ride uh, from the International Space Station down to Earth and uh, haven't been in gravity for the past 168 days. This gives them a little bit of a chance to adjust before they're expected to, to walk on their own steam. That's uh, number two. The second one. Okay, so Scott will go into the first compartment as soon as you enter the door. The first one to the left. Okay. And there's uh, Scott Tingle making his way to the uh, to the uh, medical tent. Once again, once they're there, they will be able to get out of those launch and entry suits and they'll have a few tests that they um, take part in before they are able to board their helicopters and make their way home. Hold on. 